Benfica might very well be a cursed football club. They have actually lost their last eight European finals in a row, five in the Champions League, three in the Europa League. And today we're going to give ourselves five years as manager of the club to try and change that. Obviously, they're a team that win countless honours on a domestic front. They now have 38 Portuguese Premier Leagues to their name, most recently winning it only last season. And this year, whilst they are competing for the league, it looks like it's Sporting Club de Portugal's to lose. And very recently, Benfica suffered a heavy 5-0 loss to their rivals, Porto. Today, though, we're going to try and break that curse, selling players and bringing players in to try and make a club that can regularly compete in European competition. And we've actually got a great squad to help us do that. According to FM, our best players include Nicolas Otamendi, former Real Madrid star Angel Di Maria, and also the wide talent that is Rafa. Now, that's all well and good, but two of those are very old, and Rafa has only got a year left on his contract, so we're going to to have to bring through a new set of players into this team but thankfully we've got a great academy and that's helped produce stars like Antonio Silva and João Neves who's a fantastic midfielder attracting interest from the likes of Manchester United in real life and there's also some young sign talents like goalkeeper Anatoly Trubin and Brazilian forward Marcus Leonardo. Despite that great squad though, we're only predicted second place in the league with Porto predicted to be the eventual winners. But we have got 10 million to spend and 40 grand's worth of wage budget to try and improve our 11. We've got great facilities and a great stadium and that's really going to help us on our journey of breaking this European curse. And if you don't know about it, go and have a read up. It's a crazy story. Benfica in the 60s won two consecutive European titles their manager then left and said they wouldn't win a European trophy for a long long time and in the end he's ended up being right and a lot of people class it as a very real curse we're going to break that today with some transfers though but first before we get started if you do enjoy the video or you just want to help me out here on the channel I'd really appreciate it if you could scroll down click the like button it takes a few seconds to do you can forget you ever did it but it really does help me and the videos here on YouTube subscribe as well if you haven't already we're about to reach 32 2,000 subscribers on our journey to 50k so thank you to anyone who can help there and comment down below what rebuild you want to see next every rebuild we do is based on your suggestions and the final thing don't worry I'm nearly done is if you want to continue this save yourself I'll be uploading the save files from this save onto my patreon which is linked in the description over there you can support me as a creator and in return you get access to the save files from the rebuilds all the ones we've done on the channel so you can have a go yourself and see if you can do a better job or even continue after season five once this rebuild is done. With that being said, let's make some transfers and get this rebuild moving. And to be honest, our squad was in a very good place. So I didn't see too much reason to sell too many players or buy too many. I think that's more going to be a next season problem. That being said, though, we did bring in one talent. It's a 23-year-old Portuguese under-21 international. It's Leonardo Lello. We actually beat Sporting Club de Portugal to his signing. Two million pounds is the fee coming in from Cassia Pia, a fellow Portuguese side for two million. The fee can rise to 2.3 million, but I'm perfectly fine with that. I think he's going to give us some very good depth at left back and helps with a competition for that spot. But let's introduce you to our best 11 here where I'll try and keep some of the core players for the length of this rebuild if I can. In goal, we've got Anatoly Trubin, who you've met. We've got Alexander Barr at right back, a Danishman. At centre back, it's Silva and Otamendi with Juan Bernat in on loan from PSG as our best left back, which is why I did go out into the market to sign one permanently. In defensive midfield, we have Florentino Luis, a homegrown product who's wanted by Chelsea here. He's He's a fantastic hard-working midfielder alongside João Neves who you know and also Frederick Aroznes. I don't know if I've pronounced that right but he's a Norwegian recently signed from Feyenoord and he looks like a phenomenal player in the midfield who's versatile and is definitely going to be one of our stars of this rebuild. On the right is Di Maria, Rafa is on the left and then our best striker currently is apparently Arthur Cabral, a Brazilian 25 year old and on paper he looks like he should be a very good forward for the Portuguese leagues. Plenty of great players is sprinkled throughout the squad though you've got Morato you've also got Erkan Koshu formerly of Feyenoord 2 David Neres is there on the bench as well so lots of talent so we've got a really good squad that can hopefully serve as well in our first season after which we can really get stuck in to the rebuild start bringing in our own players and making this squad our own but let's see how we can do in season one 
And it wasn't necessarily our best season nor our worst, but we finished in third place with 80 points, two points behind second place Porto, with Sporting CP running away with 87 points, only losing one game. So much like in real life, it seems our Benfica team is going to be second or third best to this Sporting CP side under Ruben Amarin in season one. We're definitely going to have to do some work if we want to close the gap on them at the top of the league. In the Champions League, we were handed a pretty easy group with Inter Milan, Astana and Red Star Belgrade who only got two points between them. We managed to win four of our matches against those teams. We lost twice to Inter but those 12 points qualified us for the knockouts. But unfortunately a round of 16 draw against Barcelona was the end of us where we lost 1-0 at home and that meant we were out of the competition. But we did manage to win the Portuguese Super Cup, the Portuguese League Cup and we were in a final against Porto for the Portuguese Cup itself where early on a clearance from the Porto goalkeeper led to a brilliant shot from new signing Leonardo Lello to put us 1-0 up. Then though, in the 80th minute, we managed to get the ball and Arunes with a great turn found Cabral who rolled his defender, got in behind, slotted it past the goalkeeper. Porto pulled one back from the spot, but it did not matter because we won the trophy 2-1. One of our stars of the season was João Neves who is fantastic in the midfield. And Arthur Cabral's first season in a Benfica shirt went well with 17 goals in the league. So for season one, we won three domestic trophies but unfortunately we didn't win the league and we did make the knockouts of the Champions League but we want to go much further in both of those competitions going forward so now that season one's done the one where we do the least work it's time to really get stuck into things with the season two transfers. Now, Benfica in recent years have been a fantastic selling team, selling players on for huge sums. Take Enzo Fernandez, Darwin Nunes, for example. And we try to follow a similar mold by making more money on sales than we would spend on the incomings, all whilst improving the team and having a major focus on youth. And I think we did a great job of that. The first sale of this window, though, was Kasper Tengstedt, who had only recently been bought in by Benfica. But I didn't really like him and he barely played for his last year. Only two appearances all season, both off the bench. Bench, so he's gone to Saudi for 1.3 million. Two major sales though included our Brazilian David Neres who was fantastic on the wing last season. Five goals, five assists in the league and a 7.17 average match rating. Recently signing from Shakhtar, we have nearly tripled our money there selling him to Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia for 35 million with no additional fees. He's on a 1 million pound a week contract so he's loving life and we take that money that we've made from him and reinvested it into the squad. One sale I was really disappointed disappointed with though was Frederick Aruznes whose name I won't miss trying to pronounce but he was a fantastic player one of our best unfortunately unbeknownst to me he did have a release clause which Man U activated 43 million pounds for the man who was fantastic last year 10 goals and 6 assists in 28 league starts and that's only from central midfield now he is 28 years of age so it's not a bad fee at all I'm sure he'll do great at Man United but we've just got to deal with it he's gone and we needed to replace him and replace him we did signing Croatian international 21 year old Luka Sukic from RB Salzburg out in Austria where he's been very good a 7.85 average match rating 15 million quid was a release clause fee for him he's definitely more forward thinking than a lot of our central midfielders and I think that's going to be a nice balance alongside Jean Neves and Florentino Luis a more direct replacement for Frederic Aruznes though is going to be Nicolas Capoldo a 25 year old Argentinian also joining from RB Salzburg for only 13 million again a good season last time out, attracted the interest of our scouts and we bought him. If you don't know, in these videos I only sign players that our scouts recommend so I can't use my own knowledge. But I was very happy when our scouts recommended our Angel Di Maria replacement to be Rooney Bargi. Now Di Maria has left at the end of his season and Rafa also left at the end of his contract too so we definitely needed some extra depth on the wings and Bargi is going to represent that with six international appearances for Sweden at only the age of 18. He's been fantastic for Copenhagen in real life. In game, not so much, but I definitely think he's got the potential to be our world-class right winger. We also added Fabian Rees, who joins us from Hertha Berlin after a fantastic season in the Bundesliga 2. £6 million is the fee for him. A very good direct winger who can play on either side to give us that extra depth. 
And we signed a backup right back too. Samuel Birindelli joining us from the Italian division, signing from Brianza, also known as Monza, for 13 million quid. Wasn't great last year, but our scouts thought he could be a decent option. And looking at his attributes, I think it could work. So we're going to try and bounce back from that disappointing third place finish with this new look team. And our best 11 now includes Trubin in goal. Bar, Silva, Otamendi and Lello comes in now as our best left back. Sukic joins the midfield alongside Neves and Luis and then Fabian Reese comes straight in in that best 11 as does Andreas Schelderup who's a brilliant Norwegian youngster who was on loan last year for SC Norseland and did very well for them. We didn't make this signing. This is one that Benfica have already done in real life but if you know Football Manager you know Schelderup is going to be an absolute beast for us once he develops. And then Cabral is still our main man up top and why not because he was so good last year. So many great options on the bench too and lots of great young talents we're slowly promoting into the 11 like Thomas Araujo who's a good depth option centre back who we've got. We've also got Rafael Luis from the academy who is a brilliant defensive midfielder. Lots of players coming through, João Foloso being another one and hopefully we'll see a few of them become regular starters as time goes by but this is our team ready to go for season two and if we have a look at the season preview are we any better than last year? We are. We predicted joint title favourites with Porto. Despite winning it last year, Ruben Amarin's men are only predicted to come in that third place position. We are in the Europa League this season, which might be a bit more of our level currently. So maybe we can go out and try and win that and break the curse early before pushing for a Champions League later in this video. But that's all up in the air. We spent a lot of money. We improved the team. Even though we did make more money in sales, I'm still expecting a much better season from this side or else I might end up losing my job. Now I did mention I wanted us to give a good go at trying to win the Europa League and we did make it to the quarterfinals where we faced Xabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen and after a 1-1 draw in the first leg we went to Leverkusen's ground where Victor Boniface took it past our defence, slid the ball past Trubin into the top right corner and unfortunately that means the curse is going to continue, that's as far as we went in Europe for now and despite losing the Super Cup and also the League Cup we were again in the Portuguese Cup final facing off against Estrella and very early on we had this brilliant goal from Juracek to put us 1-0 up in only the seventh minute and we kicked on from there in the 45th minute a cross in found Rooney Bargi who laid it off to João Neves our young player who's going to be a future captain putting us 2-0 up then once again he got on the ball in the 56th minute we played some nice football Sukic found Juracek who really made a name for himself at left back this year and then it ended up going in as an own goal he was on loan last season which might be why you don't recognize the name now though he's very much a part of this first team. Estrella weren't going to give up though and in the 59th minute they went through the middle through Rodriguez who put it past Trubin to make it 3-1 at which point we might have worried that there was some kind of comeback but thankfully in the 70th minute Rooney Bargi went down the right hand side got across into the box and he found Sukic our new signing who sealed the deal. He made it 4-1 and that meant we've won the Portuguese Cup yet again. And you're all probably wanting to know how we did in the league. Well unfortunately we did not win it despite having a pretty good season and beating Sporting Club de Portugal by a pretty big points margin. Unfortunately, Porto just had a very good year. They only lost once all season. We lost six times and drew zero. They got 89 points. We got 84. And again, it's another season without the Portuguese top fly under our belt, which is disappointing. But we do have a young squad and we're going to try and move forward. And there's definitely some things to be positive about because a lot of our young players really did perform well. João Neves scoring 19 goals. Sukic with 14, shoulder up, getting 19 in his first season, Capaldo scoring 5 as well, Erkan Kochu going in with 14 goals from midfield we had lots of great performers and 31 goals from Arthur Cabral let's not forget about him, he does now want a new contract though, so I'm definitely classing this season as progress, I feel like the team's got a little bit better despite losing a lot of key names, we are going to lose another player though this year with Nicolas Otamende, our captain, retiring at the end of the season, so we need to try and replace his influence on the defence. We do have some money to be able to replace him though with 30 million quid to spend and 100 grand of wage budget so let's see what we can do to change the team with incomings and outgoings. Can we make this side a team that can actually win the Portuguese top division? 
Alongside Otamendi departing, we also lost a few older heads in the squad, Jean Mario being one, moving to Feyenoord for two million in the last year of his deal. A really weird one, Arthur Cabral has left us, despite being really good for us and most of the players, and me included, not wanting him to leave. He wanted a new contract, wanted an excessive amount, then a Saudi side came in for him and he decided he really wanted to go there, only to actually get less money there than what he was asking for from us, which is very strange. We only got nine million quid for him, but I guess we just need to say goodbye and move on from the Brazilian. We also lost Alexander Barr, who's moved to Brentford, a Danishman at Brentford. It's a perfect match really, isn't it? The 27 year old has moved for 11 million quid, has been good for us, but slowly we've got some better players in that position. So I think we're okay to let him go. And the final sale was Erkan Kochu, who has moved to a top five European league, signing for German side RB Leipzig for 27.5 million, rising to 37. Not bad considering when we signed him, he played 21 times and last year he only started six games came off the bench seven and whilst he did do well in all of those appearances I'm not rejecting that kind of money for him so that was 52 million pounds worth of sales and we spent just over 40 million so again we ended up in a net transfer positive our new right back is going to be 25 year old Swedishman Emil Holm who has 24 international caps is very good both defensively and going forward six foot three so a big physical presence on the right 16 million quid is what we've paid for him from the Italian divisions where he's been exceptional, particularly last season on loan in Serie B. I think he's going to be a great addition to our back line. Sergei Pinyev has also signed for us a wing option who's came in for a fee of 9.75 million from Lokomotiv Moscow out in Russia. I think he's going to be a nice bit of depth on either wing. I don't really think he'll be a star player for us, but a good option on either side. Speaking of star players though, with Cabral leaving, we needed a new striker and we've opted against going for a young player and instead gone for a ready-made goal scorer signing Serhao Grassi. He's coming in from Stuttgart in the Bundesliga where we activated his £17 million release clause. Two great seasons for them in the German top flight. Now he comes to Portugal as one of our best players. He's going to be the main man up front. I couldn't find many better young strikers in the market currently. So Grassi's in for a couple of years and then we can replace him later down the line with someone younger if they become available. Now as for the Otamendi replacement, I didn't actually go out and sign anyone directly. Instead, we're using the young Brazilian Morato, who's came through at Benfica a few years ago. He was originally signed from the Brazilian divisions and then has got some game time over the years. I think he's going to be a pretty capable backup and replacement for Otamende, but we'll see. This year will really determine whether we need someone else at centre-back. And because he is now going up the pecking order as one of our best defenders, we needed a new young defender to come in as our fourth choice. And that is going to be the youngster, João Fonseca, who's came out of the academy and looks like a real great option in that centre-back slot. Outside of that though, we are seeing the introduction to Rooney Bargi to our best 11 and also David Juracek, who he mentioned when we looked at some of the highlights from season two. He was originally on loan at Hoffenheim. I wanted to sell him. He didn't go. He ended up playing most of the games last year and did really well. So we're going to stick with him for now. 24-year-old Czech international, not a bad player to have in our ranks. And there's lots of great young academy products. I won't show all of them, but if you keep your eye out, you might notice is just how many of these bench and reserve players are coming up from our under 21s, our B team and our under 18. So we're definitely building the right kind of Benfica here. Fingers crossed we look better in the season preview with these new transfers. And we do. For once, we are not joint favourites to win the league. We are just straight up favourites ahead of Porto, who have been a very good competitor under Sergio Conchacao in recent years. Sporting CP is still managed by Amarin as well. So there's lots of competition in this league. It's certainly not a one way league like some other divisions are it's hard to win out here but in season three we're going to have to try and win it because if we don't we'll have two seasons left not only to win the league but we're trying to win a champions league not just the portuguese top division so we need to do something special and before we see the results for season three, just to let you know, there is a Discord linked in the description as well. It's a great community for all things Football Manager if you want to check it out, if it's your kind of thing. Over 800 members now, getting close to 1,000, a brilliant community that talk about everything from general life to real life football to sharing their FM says, asking for advice on Football Manager, all of that good stuff. So if Discord is your thing, make sure you go and check that out. Now the Champions League this year certainly did not go to plan. We got into the knockout playoff rounds after a decent league 
phase and got put against Porto, a fellow Portuguese side who knocked us out 3-2 on aggregate, which is going to be heartbreaking for any Benfica fan. And it was a battle with Sporting Club de Portugal this year for the domestic cups. We won the League Cup, but unfortunately they went on to win the Portuguese Cup. But for once in the league, we actually put up a good showing. And despite not having our best season in terms of points, we went into the last game of the season knowing a win would give us the title. And with Porto breathing down our necks, it looked like we might actually bottle the league on the last day of the season against Aruka in the 89th minute. We needed a goal and that's when Fabian Ruiz stepped up with a brilliant finish and that meant thankfully we have now won the Portuguese league title. Like I say, it definitely was not our best year. We only finished on 83 points, but everybody else was just not as good either, which definitely helped us out. If you have a look at the table, you can see we lost three games, but thankfully Porto and Sporting CP did lose five each. So we were okay this year, although in another season, this wouldn't have been enough to get over the line. And once again, it was a team effort, not a single individual because Sucic chipped in with nine goals and he is now classed as a world-class midfielder at the age of 23. We've also got Rooney Bargi, 13 goals from him on the right-hand side for the Wonder Kid. Jao Neves, also a world-class midfielder. And remember, this guy is only 21 and he's only got pros in his coach report. We've also got Shoulder Up getting 13 goals, developing very nicely on the left. Also only 21. Jao Vonseca was brilliant when called upon, which is great to see from the young centre-back. Veloso, Trubin, Paul Ocon as well. Some of these players you won't even know. They're just academy products that have broke through and have taken their chance and done very well for us. So it was a great year. The main man up top, Grassi, managed to get 21 goals from us. Yes, he is declining a little bit and it's not the best return ever, but it's not bad by any stretch. He helped us get that league title and that's the first bit done. Now we've got two years to go to try and deliver that Champions League trophy. It seems a mile off right now considering we can't even beat Porto in the Champions League, but we have been granted 40 million quid to spend, 150 grand of wage budget. We can improve the team, sell some of the worst players on. And at the same time, some of these young players are really going to start to come into their own in the next few years and hopefully make a team of world beaters. Okay, this is a big transfer window, so strap yourself in. If you haven't yet liked the video, this would be a great time to do so. If you could, I would really appreciate it. But just to let you know what's coming, we sold £90 million worth of players and spent just about £30 million, and I think our team is better. Henrique Araujo, a Portuguese striker, has moved to the Saudi divisions for £7 million. He's a player that's been around Benfica for a long time, but never really made his mark. To the same club goes Paulo Bernardo, who is an academy product that we've sold on for £5 million, having never already played too much for us. That's not bad business. Despite a great goal for us to help us win the league last season, Fabian Reese wanted to go, hadn't got enough game time last year, so we've let him go. Only eight starts, he's moved on, so we do pretty much make all of our money back. But then we had three other huge sales. Leonardo Lello was the first one moving to Al Fateh in Saudi Arabia for 12 million, and that is a flat fee for the 26 year old, valued now at 30 million. Did we sell him for less than he was worth? Maybe, but he wanted to leave, we wanted to let him go, so it made sense for both parties. This one was taken out of our hands, but I wasn't too bothered about it. Al Halal came in and offered 700 grand a week for the Italian 27-year-old Samuel Birandelli. And in return, they sent us 32 million quid. Not bad for a guy that only started nine times last season. Another great bit of Benfica business. And to Saudi goes Nicolas Capoldo. He's going to Al Ali. The 27-year-old Argentinian has been great when called upon, but signed for 30 mil a few years later, sold for 30. Again, I feel like we're making some really good transfer moves in this one. Didn't lose any key players, but still raised 90 million. And of course, that meant new faces coming in. Jean Miranda was the first one, the Spanish international left back, 26 years of age, joining us from Real Betis for a fee of 20 mil, rising for 23. Brian Gill, the former Tottenham player and Spanish international, is 25 now and a very good left wing option. He's came in from a free contract after Tottenham let him go after what was his best season for the Premier League side. Speaking of Premier League players, Mark Rocca has joined us on a free, the former Leeds man was let go at the end of his contract after a year in the Prem. Fantastic in the Championship. He's going to be a depth option and we've paid absolutely nothing for him. And then we've got a few new gem players for the future. The 
first one is Lataro Carranza, an Argentinian 18-year-old, joining from San Lorenzo for just under 7 mil. He's got a lot of ability, but mainly has a bright future. If you're someone that goes on the Patreon and ends up using these save files, I reckon he could turn into a world beater. The same goes for this centre-back that we've actually sent out on loan for the season from the club that we originally signed him from. This is Lionel Lescano. I think next year he could be really good for us. Came in for 5 million, loan straight back out. He is going to be a big, big player. And we've also added a backup right back to replace Birandelli. This is Angelo Preciado. He is an Ecuadorian signing from Sparta Prague out in the Czech divisions, joining us for a few million quid. And I think he's going to be a very capable, dependable backup right back. And this is a really good team now. I know there isn't a crazy amount of standout names, but a lot of these players are the future of their positions in this FM world. I mean, Trubin is now 24 and has been here for a bunch of years and is brilliant in goal. We've got Emil Holm, who is one of the world's best right backs now at the age of 26. We've got Antonio Silva, a homegrown centre-back of the highest ability and a Portuguese international. Morato as well, the Brazilian, is looking very good at the age of 25. Juracek, maybe not the best, but he's fine. Florentino Luis, Neves and Sukic make up a midfield of world-class players, in my opinion. Then Rooney Bargi, Sheldarup, fantastic young wingers that are already good enough to be some of the best in the world, alongside a very capable striker in Garassi. And that's with a bench full of great young talent to develop for the future. I think this Benfica rebuild is going in the right direction player-wise. In terms of performances on the pitch, though, that's still yet to be seen. We need to try and win that Champions League in two years to try and break the curse. Otherwise, we failed and the curse will continue forever and more at this rate. So let's see what we can do in Season 4. Okay, season four was a weird one. Let's start about talking about the Cups, where we won the League Cup, we win the Super Cup, and we were also faced off against Porto for the Portuguese Cup final. And we wanted revenge on Porto, not just for the Champions League, but also for something that happened this season, which we'll talk about in a second. And we got off to a flyer in only the early minutes for Morato, scoring a header from a corner. Porto, though, in the 30th minute, got through our defence, find Evan Nilsson to Galeno, and he made it 1-1. But we decided to turn it on in the 40th minute with a great goal from shoulder up running past the defense to make it 2-1 and from there we got our tails up we weren't going to let Porto get back in the game shoulder up in the 47th minute on the left hand side found Sukic in the box he dribbled past his man and with a great finish made it 3-1 to us on the night but we weren't going to stop there we wanted more goals in the 58th minute Rooney Bargi a fantastic talent on the right hand side found João Neves our young leader captain on the day blasted it past the goal keeper he made it 4-1 were we gonna stop there though no we weren't we kept going in the 67th Garassi with a penalty blasted into the corner that was now 5-1 and if we didn't want to embarrass them anymore we went ahead with flares lit in the corner from the Porto fans in the 85th minute Rooney Bargi on the right hand side found João Neves he took it in and he scored so if you lost count that was a 6-1 final defeat against FC Porto we absolutely wiped the park with them which is surprising because they actually won the Portuguese title and that's why we wanted revenge. They went on to win the league with 87 points. We only lost one time all season but we drew seven times. 85 points was not enough. Porto went home with the trophy and it meant we gave our title up having only won it in season three. Now the most we'll ever win it if we win it in season five will be two occasions. So it's not the best and if we want this rebuild to be a success we need to deliver a European trophy. And this year we made the quarterfinals up against Borussia Dortmund and in the 50th minute in our home stadium, Holm got round the back, found João Neves for another goal from the fantastic midfielder to make it 1-0, and then we managed to add a second. In the 60th minute, Brian Gill, formerly of Tottenham, lost the ball, but Mark Rocker picked it up, found Rooney Bargi at the back post, and a brilliant first-time ball to Grassi made it two. We then took that lead to Germany with an aim of finishing it off and making a Champions League semi-final. This ball made its way across the box, and a defensive error led to the ball being tapped in at the back post by Shoulder up to make it 3-0 on aggregate. Dortmund though weren't going to give up very easily. Ocampos came forward in the late minutes. The ball ended up with Schuller. This is 65 minutes on the clock at this point. He found Adiemi at the back post and it was 3-1 and a resurgent Dortmund team were willing to try and knock us out. But we stepped up in the 66th minute only after conceding a few minutes before. João Neves found Carranza in the right wing spot. He put in a good ball through to Marcus Leonardo who powered it home and that meant we were going to a Champions League 
semi. We faced Real Madrid and lost 2-1 at home. We had an early chance to score a penalty that was missed in this leg at the Bernabeu and then Madrid capitalised with Endrick making it 3-1 on aggregate in the 59th minute. A semi-final was a long way to come for us. We had done well but Real Madrid proved too much for us and in the 64th minute Valverde managed to get the ball across to McAllister. He made it 4-1 on aggregate on the night. We didn't give up though. We kept pushing and in the 84th minute we did bring something home from the Bernabeu with Holm going down the right hand side making his way into the area and putting a nice ball across the shoulder up who headed home. That was 4-2 the end of our Champions League run. We lost to one of the best sides in the world but it did show progress for our young Portuguese side. So maybe we lost the league because we focused so much on the Cups and the Champions League. We played so many games there that we ended up losing out but it did mean loads of goals from loads of players. Neves scored 12. Garassi got 46 goals in 48 appearances. Three goals from Sukic, 10 from Bargi, 16 from Brian Gil, Javaloso getting 8. That's an academy product player who's came through and is getting minutes now for our team. Shoulderup scored 12 as well. 13 for Leonardo. Goals across the pitch and now we've got one season left to go to try and break the curse. It's not looking likely but a semi-final is good. If we can make it there again we might have a chance of winning the competition. 73 million to spend and 400 grand of wage budget. The board must know it's my final season. They're giving everything to us now to try and win this trophy. Now for once we might have to change our game plan and instead of going for youth go for someone who's tried and tested who's going to score us loads of goals. We'll see what happens in the transfer market. We've got money to spend so I think we should spend it. And even though it was a big window, we spent a lot of money. We actually broke even on sales to players bought in. I think we actually spent £1 million more on the incomings, but you can forgive that. Going out first was Thomas Araujo joining Sassuolo for £3.3 million. David Juracek has been a great player for us, but he's now gone to Ajax for 6.5 mil. Paul Ocon, a Belgian 22-year-old, has moved to play for Al Shabab out in Saudi. He was signed from Club Bruges on a free. He's been at Benfica for a few years now. We've loaned him out a few times. He was good at Braga and that's earned him a move to a pretty sizable club. But then two major sales. Emil Holm was a player that had interest from all the biggest clubs in the world. Real, Manchester United, Liverpool and Man City all bid for the right back. He chose Man City, 35 million quid was the fee, rising to 46. It was the best offer of the lot and good luck to him there. We've got a lot of money for him. And we've also done pretty well out of Sir Hal Grassi, who was great for us last year. That raised his stock on the market. And whilst I do want to win the Champions League, I have to be smart in a business sense and accept 40 million quid for a player that was signed for 70 million at the age of 30. He's now 31. He's not going to get any better so he can go off to Saudi where he wanted to go and we get loads of money to reinvest. And we certainly reinvested it because we now have four key players coming into our 11. Firstly, Milan van Uyck is coming in. He's a Dutch 26-year-old joining from Coventry who were in the Premier League at one point. He's been fantastic every single season, let go on a free and now comes in as our best player in that position. Similar story, Bradley Locco signed on a free 25-year-old French under-21 international coming in from Brest where he's been great in both Ligue 1 and Ligue 2. No money spent on him at all and he's probably our best left back now. Lamine Kamara is a fantastic midfield addition, a Senegalese international signing from FC Metz in Ligue 2 as well where he's been fantastic for a few years. 20 million is the fee. I think he's a good little player to have. Good going forward, good defensively, a nice bit of balance and depth in that midfield area. But I said we spent money and we did, bringing in our biggest name so far, Victor Boniface, 26-year-old Nigerian striker, 30 goals in 32 international appearances in the prime of his career from Javi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen side. 78 million was the release clause. We've paid it. He's coming in as our best player now and fingers crossed he can deliver all the goals and lead this team to a trophy. And what a side this is at this point. I mean, Trubin in goal, fantastic. One of the world's best goalkeepers as seen by the clubs interested in him. Van Uyck, Antonio Silva, Morato and Loco at the back with Luis, Neves, Sukic, Bargi, Gil and Boniface. There's a bench full of great players too. I mean, Marcus Leonardo, Kamara, also Fonseca, Rego, Veloso, Shelderup, Rocca. None of them make our best 11, which shows just how far we've came with this Benfica team. And if we now have a look at the season preview, we are odds on favourites. We're predicted to win the league this season. So we're going to make sure we live up to those expectations. One year to go, one last attempt, can we break the curse and can we also try and win our second league title?
Let's start with the league where we did our best yet, an 88 points total, six point gap between us and Porto in second, two losses, four draws, 104 goals scored. We've delivered the league title back to Benfica. We're certainly the best team in the division now, and we show that by also winning the League Cup and the Portuguese Cup, only losing in the Super Cup at the start of the season. But of course, we were here for one thing and one thing only, to break the curse of Benfica to win a European competition. Once more, we made a European semi-final, lost to PSG 1-0 in the first leg at the Parc de Prance, but then we brought them back to Portugal and in the 26th minute, Lamine Camara made it 1-1. It was all up for grabs and there was a place in the final really within reach for us. And in the 84th minute, after a very strong game against one of the best sides in the world, Florentino Luis found Marcus Leonardo, he found Lamine Camara, who put it past Donnarumma, and that meant we were heading to a Champions League final. That set up a Champions League final against Premier League champions Manchester City, and despite dominating the match, that does not mean that we would win the game, because Ruben Diaz scored after 8 minutes to make it 1-0 to the citizens, and I mean, as we all know, playing well does not mean a win in Football Manager. But despite that, in the 39th minute, Sheldrup made his way into the box, a deflected shot finally mean Kamara, who also scuffed his shot, but it ended up going in off both posts, and that went all the way into extra time. We were drawing until Callum Doyle got sent off for City for a double yellow. Mark Rocker fan Marcus Leonardo in the 113th minute, he hit this brilliant long shot, and we lifted the curse of Benfica. We won the Champions League and delivered the trophy that we were meant to. And if you don't believe me about domination, yes, we didn't have the most possession, but 10 shots, 2.43 XG, City had nothing nothing like that. Maybe we got lucky with Man City getting a man sent off, but we've lost eight finals in a row in Europe. This was a good time to get some luck. And there were some big heroes to thank for how well this rebuild went. I mean, Bargi and Neves have continued to get better, but one player we can't overlook, despite the fact that Victor Boniface scored 31 goals, Marcus Leonardo managed to chip in with 27 goals this season. The young Brazilian really made his mark in the team. No other year had he been this good, but he stepped up in the big moments in that Champions League final goal will put him in the memory of every Benfica fan for the foreseeable future, I'm sure. We're now a five-star reputation club. We've pretty much got max facilities. The stadium is huge. We've got a squad full of great talent, lots of potential still to come through as well. Loads of youth players brought through. The amount of Portuguese nationals in this team is insane. We've absolutely smashed it with this Benfica side. Built a brilliant squad. If you have enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.